Hi, Alan Stankovitz here for DayCreek.com, and today it's minus 36 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not wind chill, that's actual temperature. That's about minus 38 Celsius. It's cold out. Not only is it cold, but we've got some cool ice fog going on right now, uh, which is cool, really, literally. In any event, I thought today we'd talk about how many BTUs does it take to heat a house on a day like this, and how to plan for it. Here, Trek, you're going to be famous. You're going to be on the internet. Well, we're back inside where it's a lot warmer. This is Trek, by the way. He, uh, his name actually stands for the Renewable Energy Cat. His name is actually an acronym. He's just purring away. Anyways, we're back inside the house and uh, this journal entry is going to be a bit of a geeky one, so I'm just warning you ahead of time. But I think it's really important, especially for those that are planning on building their own home, to take the time and to do a heat loss calculation. Because how else are you going to know how much heat you need inside of your house uh, in order to heat it during really cold weather? Because that's the real kicker because it gets cold and it got colder a lot colder than, than normal so when you do a heat load calculation typically they want you to not do a worst case scenario but uh, at least a normal cold temperature for any given year well i'm thinking that it's probably best to do a worst case scenario so that you know ahead of time you know what your heat load would be if it really really got extraordinarily cold like it did here here in southeast minnesota maybe a few times a winter we might get down minus 15 minus 20 degrees fahrenheit and that's usually about as low that it goes uh, but yesterday it was minus 27 in the morning and today was minus 36 almost minus 37 degrees below zero fahrenheit which is about minus 38, minus 39 Celsius. And that's a big deal. That's uh, way below normal. And in any event, I think that it would make sense to, for anyone that's gonna build their house to, to pay close attention to this. And I had done a heat load calculation back before we built the house uh, in the year 2000. Um, and I really estimated it not in a worst case scenario. Well, luckily we've had plenty of BTUs to heat the house over the last couple of days, but let's take the time right now and go through a, a calculation. I found a, a really nice website that uh, can take you through this calculation and we'll go through uh, one together our, for our house in particular. The website I found that has quite a bit of uh, good information about um, calculating BTUs is Build It Solar. And what we're going to do is we're going to go under References, we're going to go to Calculators, and then down to Home Heat Loss. So it brings up this page here. Um, I am going to show you one I've already created. And I'm not going to go through everything here because you can do an awful lot more than just calculate BTUs with this uh, calculator. You can do a lot of plug and play based on your R values and the type of uh, heating you use. It'll tell you what your cost would be and so forth. But I'm going to go through some of the fields that uh, are necessary. The first one is the design outdoor temperature, this one right here. And what they say is coldest temperature expected in a normal year. Well, <laughs> what's normal? Um, you know, typically, I would imagine in most years we might get down to minus 15, minus 20. And that was the number that I originally used uh, for calculating out our heat load. But let's, and let's use minus 20, and then we'll go back and change it. So minus 20, heating degree, heating degree day units you do not need but if you want to get into how much it costs to heat your house for a season, you're going to need this value. And they also have a uh, map here 
that shows you. And for Southeast Minnesota, we're in the 8,000 uh, degree day units um, for our area. So that's what I plugged in. And this, again, is only really needed if you want to calculate your costs out for an entire heating season. Um, if you're using electric boiler like I do, you might want to plug in the cents, number of cents per kilowatt. Again, we don't need this to do a BTU load calculation, but it's there. But these numbers we do need, and the first one is uh, your ceiling. Okay. Now our house is approximately a thousand square feet in surface area, so our ceiling is the same. So if you take that thousand. Uh, and you plug that in here, you want to also include your R value. In our particular case, we've got a lot of blown in cellulose in our ceiling, and it's about R60. Okay. And then the walls. Well, in our case, our core wood walls, um, if, you, if you had no windows and doors at all, our core wood walls would equal about uh, 2,050 square feet. But of course we do have windows and doors. So our core wood wall surface area square footage is about 1447 and then I'm using an R value of R40 based on uh, what I've calculated out because besides the two core wood walls we have six inches uh, of spray foam as well. Okay going down further we have doors and windows. So group one are our windows and I've calculated that that equals 466 square feet. And I'm putting an R value of 2.5. Typically it would be like 1.5. But since we do put uh, the polycarbonate panels over our windows now, I'm including that as our number. And then uh, our doors. We have three doors in the house. I'm putting in R10 because it, it is a foam core door. There are some small windows and a couple of the doors. One is solid, so I'm thinking that's pretty good, R10. And then floors, we don't have a wood joist type, so that's kept at zero, but we do have a slab on grade. And uh, what they're asking for here, however, is not the square footage, but the perimeter footage, because that's where you are getting an energy nosebleed is out the sides of the floor. So I just plugged in our perimeter, which is 128 feet, and left the R value at 2 based on what they had in the numbers. Uh, you come up with, this will calculate out a, a whole house of um, you know, 180 or um, 18,000 cubic feet, and um, air infiltration. I put in 0.4, which is kind of between a very tight and tight house, because our house is pretty much sealed up except for a couple vents that we have to draw in air for our wood stove. And then number of occupants, <laughs> two, uh, that's again if you were calculating uh, your annual heat loss or need rather. So anyways, if we calculate this out, we come up with a number of about 40,000 BTUs per hour and that's a worst case scenario, minus 20 degrees. But now what I'm going to do is go back up here to the top and we're going to change the minus 20 to a minus 40 uh, because that's almost as low as it got today. And if we calculate that out now, it shows our total BTU uh, loss at about 50,000, 49, 50,000 BTUs per hour. And I think that's a pretty good number based on uh, what I was able to do with using the wood stove and our electric heat and it definitely kept the house warm. So anyways, it's really a nice tool to use to understand, uh, you know, basically how much heat load your house needs and based on your specifics, it's going to uh, greatly vary. But I found this really useful because you can plug and play with these numbers and really get finite as to what your needs are with regards to heating a house. So you might be wondering, well, what's our house like? Well, our house, first of all, we have uh, R40 walls. We have a cordwood house with two walls with foam insulation in between. The foam insulation adds R value and prevents air infiltration. So the house is pretty tight. Then we have R60 in the ceiling, which uh, is blown in cellulose. So the house is pretty well insulated. 
But then we have to think about what we use to heat the house. And we use passive solar, which is the sun coming through the windows. And then we also have active solar, which is a total of 10 flat plate collectors that bring in a hot non-toxic glycol solution into the floor and heats the floor. But the sun doesn't always shine, and we've had times where almost an entire month we won't get much sun at all, at least anything meaningful to heat the house. So you have to rely on other methods, and our primary method is a wood stove. It's a small wood stove, and it puts out about 60,000 BTUs max, and typically it's running maybe 30,000 BTUs when we use it. And we also have an electric boiler. I don't like using it. It's an off-peak rate boiler that runs only at night, but especially when things get this cold, or if we're going away for a few days, we'll use it. And I used it uh, during this cold snap. I didn't want to get up and stoke the stove every two hours during the night, so we did use it. But typically, I would say, I think the numbers at about 50,000 BTUs are pretty accurate for our house. But I want to bring up one more point, and that's about windows. Our windows in our house are nothing special. They're a double pane window with uh, argon filled gas. And they probably have an R value of R 1.5 to 1.8. So there's a lot of heat escaping through the windows. And I thought before this cold snap, I would try to do some things to increase the R value of these windows. And so what I did was to take some polycarbonate panels that typically are used on greenhouses. I had some extra from our project for our greenhouse project and decided to use them on the outside of the windows. And this did two things. Not only did it add R value to the windows, it also stopped air infiltration because any window that opens is always going to have some air seeping in through it, even with the best weather stripping. And I know that we have air leaks because every fall we get Asian beetles that make their way through the, the weather stripping on the windows. So uh, by putting these panels over the top of the windows on the outside, uh, really helped to eliminate a lot of that air infiltration. Next winter I might try a few other things. I was reading up about how to use bubble pack to help increase the R value of your windows. I thought that'd be really cool. So we'll do some more experimenting in the future. If you'd like to learn more about this particular video and what I was just talking about, please visit the Day Creek Journal where I discuss it in more detail. And if you'd like to learn more about just our house in general, please visit daycreek.com. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really like our videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks a lot. Have a great day and stay warm.